Hi, this is Mary Landers. I'm the environment reporter at the Savannah Morning News, and we are in my backyard to look at mosquito problems and the mosquito breeding that my family and I are doing in our yard accidentally. I have with me Bobby Mullis, who is with Chatham County Mosquito Control. Uh, so we've been um, looking at my yard, and Bobby's going to help me to point out things that I need to fix back here. And we also have Pam Thompson with us. She's just escaped into the front yard to find more things there. So we'll catch up with her in a minute. So Bobby, just standing here, what's the first thing you notice? Well, the biggest thing with us when we go out to a residence are containers. Small containers, large containers, things that have been left out in the yard that collect rainwater. Uh, rainwater in those containers provide the perfect opportunity for one of our biggest nuisance mosquitoes, the tiger mosquito, to lay their eggs and have their larvae go through that, that aquatic larval stage pretty much unseen by many of us. You know, if, you, if you've got a, a bird bath is one thing because we usually go out and constantly check on bird baths, refill them. That's a prime area for mosquito larvae to sit, and we, we suggest that you dump that water out maybe twice a week, refill it to make sure it's not giving mosquitoes a, a really good nursery to have their young. Let's, let's show them what we're talking about. Yeah, there are a few things in my containers yard. come in all shapes and sizes. It could be something like a, 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 a water can. Uh, it could be a, a flower pot. Probably one of our biggest things are the saucers underneath the flower pot because most people will poke the holes in their flower pots to allow drainage to the plant that they're growing. The saucers though is a catch-all. Anything that comes through the pot ends up in the saucer can sit for days at times and provide the perfect place for a mosquito to lay its eggs and to go through that larval stage. Most of these containers would be very, very good for tiger mosquitoes. Although tiger mosquitoes have been found with West Nile virus in them, they are probably not as big a concern with West Nile as the southern house mosquito. That's our primary mosquito that carries West Nile in this area, and it too will use containers, but it prefers a much more, um, much more polluted type of environment for its young. So if you've had something that sat out for maybe six months, collected a lot of leaf litter, has a lot of debris and it fills up with water, and it allows that water to kind of ferment, to stagnate, that's the sort of situation that the southern house mosquito really thrives upon. The tiger mosquito would prefer a little bit cleaner environment okay. than the southern house mosquito. Uh, things like gutters on a house that collect a lot of leaf material would serve as a really good place for a southern house mosquito. Not so much for the tiger mosquito, although we'll find both those species of mosquitoes together as larvae in certain places. Let's, let's head over here and we, we have more examples. So I do have a gutter up there that we need to check out. Yeah, like, like an innocent looking jar that's collected rainwater. Is, is a good spot for, for several types of mosquitoes in this area, primarily the tiger mosquito. Now, now keep in mind, we have lots of different kinds of mosquitoes in the Chatham County how area. Many we have species? 43 species oh, of mosquitoes. Okay, and how many of those carry disease typically? Well, of those 43, there's about a dozen that we really look at close. Either they can be vectors directly to people or they can be vectors that will amplify a virus in another uh, population, like the birds. Many of our viruses, West Nile, Eastern Equine Encephalitis, are, are kind of in the bird population that we find around here. The reservoir are actually the birds. And for West Nile, we do see a few species of birds like crows, blue jays, birds of prey, raptors, that don't really do well when they've been infected with West Nile. So, and originally when West Nile first came into our area, 
we were seeing a lot of mortality in certain birds, mm -hmm. crows and blue yeah. jays particularly. Around, around 2000 or so? Yeah, now that, now that it was about 2002, 2003 when we mm -hmm. first okay. really thought, started seeing West Nile in our area, um, those birds did not do well when they were infected. Now that the virus has been around and our birds have been around, there's been a kind of an adjustment. We don't see near as much mortality in our bird populations as we used to. Originally, we were collecting dead birds, sending them in for testing, and that kind of gave us a, a kind of an indicator of what parts of the that. county mm -hmm. were probably heaviest for the virus itself. And we've noticed through the years that virus one year may be very, very prevalent in the eastern part of the county, and the following year it kind of moves more towards the central part or the western part of the county. So, so the virus kind of kind of moves around a little what, bit. What does that bird um, effect say about the possibility of somebody contracting West Nile? Am I, am I more likely or less likely to get it if birds are dying? That's a very good question, and that's a very difficult one to say because the virus itself can change. Mm -hmm. uh, we had we Savannah actually hosted a West Nile ten year anniversary uh, uh, kind of a, a symposium, and people from around the country kind of gathered. And during that symposium, it was said that a virus probably undergoes genetic changes and. Mm -hmm. And probably within about a six to ten year span, what you originally started off with isn't quite the same anymore. Okay. So, so the virus kind of evolves with the area it's in as well. And whereas that original virus was very, very deadly to several species of birds, after a while, the birds kind of got a little bit more used to to the virus, the virus might have changed a little bit mm -hmm. to, because let's face it, if you're a virus, the last thing you want to do is kill your host, right. because that's not going to bode very well for your life cycle okay. yeah. either. Yeah. Um, but, but originally, we did see a lot of mortality in certain species of birds, not oh. so much anymore, oh, okay. but we still see virus, and with West Nile, it tends to be kind of a... Oh, maybe a four to five year cycle in that virus where we might not see any West Nile for one or two years and or very, very small amounts of it and then it kind of gradually increases and then we have a peak year and then it kind of downslides again. And that's probably got a lot to do with our native bird population which may have about a, you know, most birds about five year life oh, cycle. Mm -hmm. And so we see a lot of naive birds. We'll see more virus when, when there's birds that haven't been exposed to the virus. The amplification occurs in the birds and mosquitoes that will take a blood meal from a bird and then later on maybe switch their preference to a mammal like a person, well, that's when we see it cross over into the humans. So normally, uh, the, the virus is probably going to be in birds early and later on in the summer, usually around July, August, we start seeing it in people and, and other animals okay. like horses. So we're getting up there. Let's go around the side where we have some more don'ts, actually. Things not to do in your yard. Things to fix, right? Kitty pools. Kitty pools can, can actually be very good for mosquitoes. If I don't know if you can see the. This is a pupil stage of a mosquito that we've got in the dipper. This is the stage just before the mosquito larvae uh, emerges as an adult. From this will come the winged adult mosquito. A lot of people talk about baby mosquitoes. There's really no such thing as a baby mosquito because once it has wings, that's an adult. And it's really not going to get any larger or smaller from that point. So it's the larval stages that determine how big that adult will be. Now generally, if mosquitoes are hatching out all at the same time, uh, like many of our floodwater mosquitoes, they have a kind of sink uh, life cycle as far as larvae go. They all kind of hatch at the same time, 
they all kind of go through the same stages at the same time. But the males are a little bit quicker, so maybe a day before the females emerge, the males emerge. So we do see a little bit of a difference, but it's only like a 24 hour difference. With something like a, a tiger mosquito, because the tiger mosquito will lay its eggs along the edge of a container that's not full, as rains raise that water level, we have kind of a non-sync sequence of hatching. And so you tend to see all different stages of tiger mosquitoes in a well-established breeding area, such as a discarded swimming pool. So, so we might see quite a few different stages together. And because of that, it's very difficult to treat that mosquito with adult sun. Right, with your spray. With, with spray. a spray, yes. Because you'll clear out the adults that are available that evening, but they are quickly replaced. New recruits into the population because you have that endless supply of pupae that are turning into adults day after day after day. With a salt marsh mosquito problem, one of our biggest nuisance mosquitoes that are more time, we generally can, can see all of those mosquitoes up and about within a 24 to 48 hour period. Now that mosquito is quite different. It has the, the ability to move great distances. So we might see that mosquito move 20 miles in one evening. And even though it's coming from the coastal areas, it can affect all the way into the western boundaries of Chatham County and further. Well, help me get rid of this. And then, Pam, yeah, there was a few down. Now, if you turn this upside yeah. down, keep in mind it has a rim around the outside, so you still don't necessarily get rid of the water. Rains can fill that rim up, and that too can act as a place for mosquito water. So maybe we want it up on its side. Yeah, or or the other thing you can do is drill a couple holes right there. Okay. Well, and that, that way, that way it won't hold it if it's upside down. Or actually, the dog outgrew it, so might be time oh, for it to go. Dogs don't outgrow things like that. They like <laughs> I mean, like he's that. too big. He barely puts it up. <laughs> <laughs> now the other thing, as we mentioned, the, the flower pots and the saucers. Saucers don't have holes in them, so they don't drain. So they end up collecting the water, and that's mainly so you're your potted plants don't make a mess on your deck. Uh, this though will provide mosquitoes the opportunity to lay their eggs and, and it's fine for mosquito larvae to, to be in a place like this. There's a lot of sediment in here. There's a lot of organic material that the mosquito larvae, which is kind of a filter feeder, will find beneficial to its diet. Okay, and we have some evidence of what was here because Pam um, yes, pipetted the some container. out, so you can see them. You can see them wiggling around in there. So say goodbye to this fair flight. Well, we're going to like you guys and find out. Are you really? Yeah, we're going to test them. And I'm sure there's more. See if you can even go in your backyard. <laughs> And then, and then this is just a, a, a container that was left out, and I don't know if I can catch any larvae. Yeah, there's some larvae. Uh, see some squirming around. We call them wigglers, and when they become pupae, we call them rollers. Or uh, that's because they kind of swim a lot differently. But these these are just some of the places we can find mosquito larvae. Uh, mosquito larvae before there were people. They probably didn't have so many opportunities, but there were other things available to them. These mosquitoes that we see in the, in the containers, they were probably more tree hole mosquito breeding mosquitoes because if a tree has a limb fall off and it kind of makes that cavity, it too will hold water during the rains. And that's another place that we're, we would find something like this. But they're opportunists. They, they are very opportunistic. Mm -hmm. Now some mosquitoes are very, very fine to what they're going to look for. Like 
there's another mosquito that might also breed in this container called Toxorhynchites. It's the largest mosquito we find in the county. A full-grown adult can be an inch or more in size, but it's the only mosquito that doesn't take a blood meal as an adult. And it, its larvae feed on the larvae of other mosquitoes, so it's a beneficial mosquito. Potential giant. It feeds only on nectar, and because it feeds on the other mosquito larvae, it's actually a good one. Years ago, when West Nile first came out here, we actually tried to release them. Oh, yeah? Um, but but um, they didn't last through the winter, oh. so, so we didn't really see too much of a benefit from that. There's a native one that might do much better, but the, the thing is, after it takes care of the mosquito larvae, it doesn't have anything to eat. So its population is very driven by the availability of other mosquito larvae as well. Okay. Let's, let's try to catch up with Pam. Oh, there's Pam. Pam. This is Pam, Pam Thompson, who's also with Chatham County Mosquito Control. Pam, could you talk about what you saw in the compost pile and what could be uh, breeding mosquitoes in there? Oh, the eggshells. Yeah, eggshells. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see any of the eggshell golden water, but mm -hmm. see, that's just like a possibility. You, you have to think of anything, anything that will cup and hold water in it. Magnolia leaves are bad. Mm -hmm. I get that. I have really bad mosquitoes in my yard. I got magnolia leaves out. The neighbors that collect them, well, with their tarps and everything else too, but still. Um, and uh, those plants, bromeliads, mm -hmm. because it's a natural vessel for water. And a, so kind of like a, a pineapple, right? <laughs> and I happen to have no, a pineapple Well, if you add it up just right in the water, it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. But even that's big enough that they could breed in there? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this, here's, there's a lady I went to her house. She just had recently, like six months prior, had all the bamboo cut in the back of her yard. Mm -hmm. Well, now she had a bunch of little openings because mm -hmm. you know the bamboo mm -hmm. section so mm -hmm. when they cut it that just left a hole for the water to collect okay, in yep. and all her bamboo that surrounded her whole yard not that all that was breeding but we looked in some of them and there's mosquito larvae oh yeah so let's um head to the lane and you can tell me what you you told me earlier about uh how that does or does not affect mosquito breeding And then I noticed where you're cleaning your rock. Yeah. There's some water in the bottom of that, and I don't know what this is supposed to be. Oh, that's eventually going to be a, a French drain, a cap for a French drain. Okay. So that water isn't going to be standing in Correct. Those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's another potential. And don't forget about your tarp up here. Right, 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 right. Water. I'm just reminding you so that. No, no, that's good. And I was walking down the lane just to see. <laughs> kind of hard because when you drive down your lanes and try to look at people's yards, they have that. Right, right. You right. can't see anything. So you have to try to look through the slack. But you could tell that this was holding water, you know, after those heavy rains, but it's dried up already. And typically, the lanes don't, typically, I'm not saying that they won't, but they don't breed mosquitoes because people drive through it a lot, which silts up the water, and that will, uh, that agitation with the, the water will keep the mosquito larvae, if there's any in there, to, to survive. But like I said, you have to try to think like a mama mosquito and when she lay, <laughs> you know, when she put her baby someplace where she doesn't think they're going to survive. Mm -hmm. And no, she wouldn't do that. So. so you were saying if people drive through, then right. that's the reason that it wouldn't breed mosquitoes. Right, because it agitates, all... puts silt in the water. Okay. And, uh, Especially on really young, like the first instar stage, they use a gill system more than they do their okay. siphon tube, and it, it'll clog them up, and they can't survive. That really fine silk in there. But trash cans without lids? Oh yeah, that's a good possibility. Okay. They have trash cans without lids, and even like you said, here's pockets that mm -hmm. if that holds water for several days, that's always a possibility. But see, every what every once a week they come by and go and they empty that anyway. So. And they yeah. need, what, four days to go 
Well, I've so seen fun. from the time that the eggs are hatched to the time that they reach adult stage, I've seen it happen as, in as few as five days. Five days. Okay. Because of the heat and the humidity here. So Actually, once or twice a week to be dumping things in your yard yeah, would be at least a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I would do that yeah. just because of this. I don't worry about that. <laughs> but trash in the lane is another trash thing. Trash in the lane is another thing. Things. And when I was walking down the lane, like down there, it's so overgrown. Vegetation. Yeah. And people have stuff grown down in there which you can't, you can't even see if you're just walking by it. Right. But I've seen that before too in lanes. It's just so overgrown and people have stuff thrown in there and they don't even see it. And there's a, be a little cup or a sauce or something that's holding water and mm -hmm. bringing mosquitoes. I've seen something as small as a bottle cap in the middle of the woods with water in it and there was mosquito hardy in it. Okay. So, I mean, it's almost anything. Not that just anything will breed mosquitoes, but you have to be, you really have to look. You really have to look. And people can come and, or can call Mosquito Control and oh, yeah. ask for... They can ask for somebody to come and inspect their yard if they want. Are yeah. you on backup with that? No, surprisingly, no. Okay. Actually, even with all the rain we've had, I haven't seen that many mosquitoes. Okay. What's yeah. the number to call? Um, 790 2540. Alright, 790. We're in the phone book, 2540. And we have a website too okay. mm -hmm. with a phone number on it. Yeah. So it should be able to contact us pretty well, okay. you know. Um, one last thing, I don't have a bird bath, but you want to get in the shade where it's oh. not quite so hot. But you had some good advice about a bird bath too. Oh, your bird bath, when you can go to. Like, they'll wash out their bird baths with their hose from a distance and they think they're flushing it out, but with all the organic material.